Hello everyone and welcome to tonight's English news broadcast. These are the main stories. Our trainers possess ingenuity that enabled them to be champions in the second tournament according to the TAD Forum. Central region over 300 nationals allotted SR land over the past 10 years. US and South Korea plan more joint naval drills. U.S. clean intelligence on U.K. according to Wikileaks. Airtrain Youngster grows stronger effect which attests that sports is integral to the culture of airtrain use on top of unrelenting rents and success through invincibility, a weekly editorial disclosed. Accordingly, airtrain use possess ingenuity as well as superior physical, moral and technical fitness that would enable them champion in different sports tournaments. The editorial went on to say that the successes that the Everton cyclists won in thousands of kilometers long African championship after their homeland have crowned them African continental champions at an individual and national level. The editorial further disclosed that yet in the course of transitional cultural exchange and interactions, sport is an event that promotes international recognition thereby amplifying the identity of a given nation. Finally, the editor asserted that owing to the achievements of the air train use have thus far registered with limited resources, it would not be too early to surprise that Eritrea would be through time among the international leading countries in sport championship when the economy thrives and investment in sports grows. More than 30,000 nationals in the central region who fulfilled their national obligation received SLN over the past 10 years, according to Mr. Mangusta Abhaptetion, head of the Minister of Labor and Human Welfare Branch in the region. He explained that a number of villages in the region were allotted SLN in accordance with the newly drafted master plan, while others conducted the allotment process in collaboration with the regional administration. Mr. Mangusta further indicated that almost all nationals living in their place of birth received agricultural land in 2007 and 8. Noting that land distribution program has temporarily halted for the purpose of ensuring efficiency, he outlined the impediments encountered in the process such as construction of major dams in the invested land, lack of master plan and remoteness of the proposed land allotment sites from the respective villages, among others. Mr. Mengsa went on to say that selling to SR land is illegal and that it should only be utilized for this purpose. In this connection, he asserted that punitive action would be taken against those individuals who resort to buying and selling the Tesa land. World HIV AIDS Day was today marked here in the capital. Speaking on the occasion, the Director of National HIV AIDS and TB Control Department and the Minister of Health, Dr. Anderbrand Tesfatyon, said that the government has been given top priority to the task of controlling the spread of HIV infection. As a result, the awareness of the society regarding the epidemic continues to gain momentum, he added. WHO country representative in Eritrea, Dr. Idris So, on his part, commended the Eritrean government's policy regarding control of HIV AIDS epidemics. The spread of HIV AIDS infection in Eritrea continues to decline, stated Dr. Anderbrand Tesfatyon, Director of National HIV AIDS and Tuberculosis Control Department in the Health Ministry. In an interview he conducted with ARENA in connection with World HIV AIDS Day, he pointed out that the infection is declining from year to year thanks to the campaign being undertaken to raise societal awareness. Dr. Anderbrand further indicated that the government is this person 8 million to 10 million now for annually for providing medical care to nationals living with HIV AIDS so that to enable them become productive. He went on to say that concerted action has also been taken to help them organize in the Bidduho HIV AIDS Association so that they may obtain psychological and medical advice besides securing financial support. Noting that the ministry has been working diligently through mapping out a five-year work program for the period of 2008 to 2012, Dr. Anderbrand said that strenuous efforts are being exerted to raise public awareness to the highest level and reducing the infection to the lowest level possible. A report by WHO revealed that HIV AIDS incidence was first witnessed in 1980s in the world and that a quarter of the 2.7 million people infected by the virus this year are found in the sub-Saharan countries.
The inhabitants of Hadish Adi Engush and Ilaber its subzone have become beneficiaries of a 24 hour electricity supply. The Australian Electricity Corporation's branch in Ansaba region disclosed that four transformers have been put in place in the two villages and that about 300 power counters have so far been distributed in residential houses and institutions. Reports indicate that over 800,000 NAFA have been dispersed for the installation of electric lines from Elaber to Hadjish Adi. The administrator of Hajj Adi, Mr. Medhani Gavreyesus, expressed conviction that the new, newly introduced power supply would reinforce health and education services as well as vegetable farming activities, besides facilitating urbanization. The inhabitants express satisfaction with the electricity supply that relieves them from darkness. Hajj Adi is one of the 13 administrative areas in Elaberi subzone, which is located about 15 kilometers southwest of Elaberi town. The Eritrean Institute of Technology has launched two degree and one diploma programs focusing on mining engineering in this academic year, according to Dr. Gabriel Abrahan Akbazgi, Vice President of the Institute. In an interview he conducted with them Tzahafa, she pointed out that the newly introduced courses are taking into account the situation of mining activities in the country and are aimed at upgrading internal capacity. In this regard, according to the degree program, involves pursuing courses to five years with the diploma program runs for three years. Dr. Gabriel Abraham further explained that, that the EIT is divided into three major faculties comprising about 20 departments. There are also over 20 degree and 15 diploma programs inside departments, he added. The Eritrean Institute of Technology, which officially opened in 2004, is ready to offer MA programs in the fields of chemistry, physics, biology, and math in this academic year. Fire accident destroyed 30 houses in Forto Semi Urban Center on November 27. Material and cash amounting to half million NAFA was burned down in the incident resulting from a flick of blaze during a sunset. The blaze was put under control through the joint efforts of the inhabitants of Forto Sawa, members of Sawa Training Center and firefighters according to reports. That's the end of our domestic news, and now please stay tuned for the international after share break. For history to document history accurately. Some analysts with a superficial knowledge of history or perhaps some entities with a dutiful intention of distorting history are comparing the issue of South Sudan to that of Eritrea. Clarifying history for the sake of being accurate and further going through the legitimate process through which Eritrea has become sovereign is positively viewed. But nonetheless, we need to remember that Eritrea has long existed as a sovereign nation prior to its annexation by Ethiopia. And therefore, the Eritrean question has always been a question of colonialism and its struggle was a struggle against the then prevailing state of injustice that has violated the rule of law. The question of Eritrea has never been a question for succession. This campaign to distort such vivid historical fact by some pseudo-historians and comparing these unrelated issues does not amount to much beyond being a futile effort to mislead and distort history. <laughs> 